honour to have him here today. Um, I'd like to thank Atisha La for helping us with our Tibet Festival and making a lot of this happen. I think we're all getting a lot out of it. It's amazing. Tibet's a long way away, but the roof of the world is down under today and I think we're all very pleased about that. So I'd just like to pass that over to Professor Rinpoche who we just had a, a few brief comments about about Tibet and Tibetan culture. Thank you. Dear friends, I'm grateful to you all to have this opportunity to see the two art and uh, photo exhibitions and met many people here as a part of Tibetan festival. I appreciate your sentiments and your support, your feeling for Tibet, for the Tibetans and uh, the cause of Tibet. The people of Australia, for the last more than 40 years, have supported consistently, continuously, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and uh, his work, the cause of Tibet, and also the welfare of Tibetan refugees in India, Nepal, Bhutan. for their welfare and your support has been uh, one of the uh, major resources to uh, look after the uprooted Tibetan people in their same. Not only that, during the last uh, several years, the government of Australia was generous enough to uh, take certain number of Tibetan refugees to be settled here and uh, that number are now gradually growing and people who could settle here are now have a very good quality of life. At the outset I must express my gratitude on my own behalf and on behalf of the people of Tibet and the Central Tibetan Administration to you all and through you, the people of Australia, for your generosity and for your kindness. <coughs> I was being asked to talk about uh, Tibet and Tibet culture. This is rather a quite vast subject <laughs> and uh, I don't know how to uh, do justice with this. And, uh, short spell of time. On the country you all know about Tibet and I don't think here any one who is uh, not familiar with the Tibet and Tibetans. But Tibet has uh, several uh, unique features uh, which might not be uh, uh, very familiar to you that was the race, the nation, and the history, and its a geographical, uh, geographical situation. As you all know, it's uh, situated between the three giant countries, the China, and the India, and the Russia. <coughs> and uh, on the highest plateau of the world, therefore people used to call Tibet as the roof of the world, and indeed it is. And His Holiness sometimes crack a joke to his friends that if the uh, roof is damaged, then how you keep the, your house in order? <laughs> very vast land and very small population. And all the through history, Tibet remained uh, 
quite aloof and isolated, having no foreigners settled inside Tibet till 1949, and remained politically independent most of the uh, period of uh, more than 2,000 years of recorded history. Pre-recorded history, we don't know much. <coughs> But these days, gradually, <coughs> there are a lot of uh, archaeological evidence have been coming out, which can prove that uh, the habitation of Tibet people remain in that plateau more than uh, 20,000 years back. It remained quite uh, backward till 6th, 7th century and during the uh, 7th century Tibet became uh, uh, one of the military powers in the Central Asia and began to uh, invade all the neighbors invasion to India up to the uh, Kuch Bihar that is uh, quite near to Bodh Gaya in Bihar and uh, invaded China several times and uh, war with the neighboring countries remained for more than 150 years until in the 9th century, 821, till the great treaty between Tibet and China was concluded during the reign of Sri Ralpachan. 7th and 8th century was the uh, period of uh, very rapid development in religion, cultural, and uh, material growth as well. Buddhism arrived from India with help of uh, Acharya Shantarachit and Kamalishi, Padma Sambhava. These three Indian scholars were responsible to establish Buddhism in Tibet and learn many things agricultural and small-scale industry from China and we uh, imitate the uh, cloth and uh, horse reading from Mongolia and Russia so that the civilization of Tibet is uh, a combination of Indian religion, Chinese food habits and uh, Mongolian and Russia's uh, uh, clothing uh, customs and it become quite colorful. Establishment of Buddhism transformed Tibet as a unique uh, nation. The whole nation is dedicated for preservation and promotion of Buddhism. In the world's history of translation, Tibet has no parallel. Entire canon of Tripita and the entirety of the uh, Indian literature regarding Buddhism and also a large number of uh, secular treatises, including uh, the medical healing system of Ayurveda. During uh, three, four hundred years of time, almost entirety canon of Buddhist literature and some of the secular literatures from Sanskrit mainly and also many other Indian languages and some of them from Chinese language as well. The quantity of translation and the quality of translation has no parallel in this world history because the Tibet language and the script both are being intentionally, purposefully developed to be a parallel language with Sanskrit. Whatever things are being expressible in Sanskrit language is exactly expressible in Tibetan language. Even the meters are the same. And that's why the texts 
originally in Sanskrit lost in India, are now able to reconstruct from the Tibet version. There are many other translations, such as the translation in uh, Chinese language. They convey the meaning, but it will not be reconstructed back because the nature of language is quite different. And the successive kings has made rules of translation. Now, Tibetan scholar, how much proficient in Sanskrit language cannot translate anything alone without any help of Indian Pandit counterpart. And any Indian Pandit, how much uh, he or she is a proficient in Tibetan language, are, they are not allowed to translate alone without the assistance of a Tibetan translator. So it make a joint effort and then there was two or three different levels of counsel of scholars to uh, check and recheck and pass the translation as worthy for record and publication. So this was our real treasure and today the Tibet is known for the entirety, the holistic form of uh, Buddhism which uh, available. There are many Buddhist countries such as uh, Burma, Thailand, Sri Lanka. The whole nation is considered to be a Buddhist nation and Buddhist government. But in these countries, only the uh, Theravada tradition of Buddhism alone is available and not any other tradition is available in these countries. <coughs> Japan, China and Mongolia. Mongolia is of course from Tibet. China and Japan, which uh, from India to China, then to Japan and then Korea. In these countries also, the tradition of Buddhism is largely built upon one particular sutras, such as um, Sadama Pandurik, or Lanka Avatar Sutra, or something like that. One sutra become one school, and there was not a totality of the uh, entire canon of Buddha's teaching. Tibet has the privilege of having the entirety right from the um, Sharavakyan, the Bodhisattvayan, and the Tantrayan. The entirety canon has been preserved and is its a tradition when I use the word tradition, it means something very special. Kumar Swami has said that uh, long-term perpetuated customs not necessarily become a tradition. Tradition means originated from a divine source, handed down unbroken lineage and verifiable through logic and reasoning. And this is the uh, characteristic of the tradition. So I'm referring to tradition to Buddhist, Buddhism means the original Buddha's teaching which are coming down unbroken lineage, person to person. Each tradition we can refer back Buddha and then Ananda and then this and then this and then this, then, then Tibet Lama. So we have the unbroken lineage of the uh, transmission uh, of the commentaries and then uh, independent development inside Tibet. So since 7th century onwards, the entire nation uh, devoted to uh, Buddhism. As much as that uh, pre-Buddhist religion born, which still exists, unbroken lineage, but the entire born tradition have been uh, uh, in a sense uh, influenced uh, by the Buddhist literature and Buddhist philosophy. Today, there is very difficult to differentiate uh, what is a particular philosophical tenets of Buddha 
and what are the different uh, philosophical uh, tenets of the Buddhism. They are all intermingled and uh, interconnected and borrowed from each other. So, Tibet become almost identical with the Buddha Dharma and uh, each and every custom or culture uh, has a root and lineage back to India and to, uh, to Buddhist teaching. So a small nation, I think at any given time, the Tibet never had more than six million uh, in its population and a little bit very, sometimes high and half, sometimes six and a little more. By and large it remains static, the population is concerned. After spread of Buddhism, it uh, transformed into a religious power, not a military power, and uh, remain very friendly with its uh, neighbors. India, of course, we brought Buddhism from India and we consider India as our teacher. And China, we give a lot of Buddhist teaching from Tibet to China and Mongolia completely become the disciples of the Tibetan teachers. So by this way, a teacher and taught relationship has been established and which later on the historians termed as a priest and a patron relationship which has so many correct or incorrect uh, interpretations but in, in reality the Tibetan spiritual masters has benefited immense to uh, all the neighboring countries including China, Russia and uh, Mongolia. So we have a very uh, peaceful and cohesive relationship with them. Tibet was uh, occupied by Mongolian force for about 30-35 uh, years from 1213-14 uh, uh, till 1217-1775. Tibet remained under the Mongolian occupation then uh, finally the Mongolian occupied China and the Mongolian dynasty established as the uh, emperor in China. They restored the sovereignty of Tibet to the Dogon Chujal Papa. And since then, 1273-1274 uh, till 1951, Tibet remained as a sovereign independent country. Although she never assert her sovereignty with any, with any other uh, country except few treaties with British India and with Mongolia and with Nepal. Otherwise it remains aloof. So therefore our sovereignty become uh, unknown to the rest of the world. So China has very handy to uh, claim their sovereignty over Tibet in 1949 onwards. <coughs> so this was a brief uh, introduction about uh, Tibet and relating to Tibetan, yes, Tibetan people. Tibetan people has a, a, a mixed kind of uh, races. The Western Tibetan people you will find its origin into uh, Aryans and they, their features are quite similar with that of uh, Pathans in Afghanistan and in uh, Pakistan and uh, those areas. <coughs> Big nose and uh, tall and uh, quite sturdy. And the central Tibet has a uh, little bit different feature. 
and the extent to it is uh, more or less a Mongolian race. But in spite of that, the Tibetan people has its uh, unique feature which can easily differentiate our race from the Mongolians or from the Aryans or from uh, any rest of the uh, other races which are available in our neighbors. Tibet culture is an extension of Buddhist Indian culture, which I can say roughly. <coughs> As a matter of fact, the world culture does not have an equal uh, term in Tibetan language because uh, it is a Western concept. And uh, in Western concept also, the definition of culture uh, is uh, very different. So many people uh, define culture in many different ways. If you look into the encyclopedias, you will find more than a uh, hundred different definitions of culture. But uh, usually the term culture is used for all kind of things. They would say culture of war, culture of violence, culture of terrorism. Uh, these are, I think, is, um, abuse of the term culture. In Tibet language, when we refer to culture, it always refers to the positive, not to the negative. <coughs> culture means the cultivation of mind. Ajay Narendra very beautifully described that culture is a cultivation of the field of mind. So your mind is uh, cultivated into a certain direction, then it grows and it uh, transforms and it becomes priority. The priority of mindset is the culture and which uh, manifests into many things. These are culture products or culture expression in art, in architect, in dance, in dharma, in sons, and all kind of perform, performing art or any kind of art and architect and all kind of good things which come out is uh, uh, the culture manifestation or culture productivity or culture expression. So there are a lot of beautiful things uh, exhibit here refers to the mindset of the Tibetan people. If the mindset is uh, very uncultured, then expression would also be kind of uh, ugly and rudeness. In Sanskrit language, we used to uh, call uh, Satya Shiva Sundaram the truth, the peacefulness, and the beauty, which is in sequence. If truth is established, peace comes automatically, and that further uh, manifests into a beauty and a, a peaceful uh, appearances. So the Tibetan art and the Tibetan architect and Tibetan music and Tibetan uh, poet and all these things are by and large in the form of uh, peace and beauty, not in the terror and in the ugliness. So this is a unique culture and does not belong into a Tibetan salon. This cultural heritage, spiritual heritage, the wisdom and knowledge, whatever we have, is belongs to a entire humanity and entire sentient beings. So, to preserve and promote this as a every human individual's responsibility and this uh, must be uh, shared by all humanity. I appreciate your effort. 
to preserve and promote Tibet cause and Tibet culture as uh, not only for sake of Tibetans, I think it is uh, relevant and worthwhile for all sentient beings. And we should not consider that uh, preservation of Tibetan culture or supporting the Tibet cause is something against the uh, China or people's value of China. It will also directly or indirectly, now or some after, will definitely benefit the people of China. As China and Tibet, the people lived together as very close brothers for thousands of years and we shall have to live in future as well. His Holiness uh, Middle Path approach and uh, total commitment to non-violence will definitely bring a positive result which would be beneficial to both the nations and also to them, the entirety of humanity, we believe in that. So you are supporting for that cause, opposing none, but support a cause which is dear and near to entire humanity and I appreciate to that and I think my time is uh, up so I shall have to uh, conclude here and thank you very much for your patience. <laughs>
environment that the advanced things is good heart, it's good. and uh 